It's hard to believe, looking at this massive Michelin man in front of you, that there's just a normal pudgy-sized human inside here. Similarly, it's hard to believe that this sleek, slight-looking machine is a full-sized SUV, designed to take on the might of such behemoths as the Porsche Cayenne, the Audi Q8 e-tron, and the BMW iX. But that's what it is. This is the first SUV from the Chinese-Swedish brand Polestar. It's called the Polestar 3, and it's a hell of a looker. You'll also notice it's in a fairly interesting location. I've come to Jokmok in Sweden, Swedish Lapland, in fact, which is inside the Arctic Circle, as you can probably tell. And Polestar spend an insane amount of time here developing their cars. Their theory is that if a vehicle can work here, in these conditions, it can work anywhere. And it regularly gets to minus 50 degrees Celsius here, which is a fair test of anything, particularly an electric car with batteries. We, however, are very, very lucky because today it's only minus 20 degrees. Toasty. And we're driving on not snow, but a frozen lake. And apparently it has cracks in it every now and then. Wonderful. So what could possibly go wrong? The first thing you'll have noticed, aside from my ridiculous clothing, is that the Polestar 3 is quite wide and low with this sloping roof line which is absolutely beautiful. It also has the batteries under the floor, like all EVs, which creates a very low center of gravity, which is very helpful for what you see going on in the background. It's also got perfect 50-50 weight balance, which means the car pivots around the middle, which is perfect for drifting. And who buys SUVs for anything else but drifting? So while the Polestar 3 looks diminutive, it's really not, because it's almost five meters long, 1.6 meters high, and close to two meters wide. That means it's plenty spacious inside, with one of those huge glass roofs that all EVs seem to have fitted as a matter of course these days. Which vastly improves the sense of light and airiness for rear passengers, who also get plenty of leg and knee room. The boot space for the Polestar 3 is reasonable at 484 litres, but it's well short of something like a Porsche Cayenne, which Polestar considers a competitor, a car that has at least 620 litres of boot space. Polestar also points to its innovative labelling of seat materials, which outline the materials used in those seats and their carbon impact. Polestar is stepping up and away from its previous vehicles with the 3 and into a new, more premium European price range. The long-range dual-motor Polestar 3 starts at $132,900, and the addition of the performance pack takes that price to $141,900. Either version comes with an excellent 25-speaker Bowers & Wilkins audio system with 1,610 watts of whomping power as standard. If you want more details on the specs and pricing, make sure you read my in-depth written review at carsguide.com.au. The new Polestar 3 is offered as standard with two motors, one on the front axle and one on the rear for ice-friendly all-wheel drive. Power distribution is constantly controlled by computers and software for optimal delivery of its 360 kilowatts and 840 newton meters of torque. And those figures rise to 380 kilowatts and 910 newton meters with the performance pack. The acceleration times for the two variants are 0 to 100 kilometers now in 5 seconds flat for the standard car or 4.7 seconds for the Polestar 3 with performance pack. Polestar claims a range of 610 km for the long-range dual-motor model, or 560 km for the more zesty performance pack version. I can tell you you won't be getting anywhere near those figures if you're abusing the batteries by running the car in sub-freezing conditions. But because you live in Australia, you probably won't. On a 250 kW DC charger, the Polestar 3 can be charged from 10% to 80% in just 30 minutes. Or with an 11 kilowatt AC charger, it would take up to 10 hours to fully charge its 111 kilowatt hour lithium ion 400 volt battery. Now, we're going onto a kind of spaghetti shaped track, shaped a bit like an intestine. The surface is a frozen lake. There's some snow on it, there's some uh, orange poles to tell me where I'm going, but all I can think is that it's a frozen lake. It's also what you call a low mu surface, which means no traction at all, basically. What this car does have though, is an absolutely amazing traction control system. If I leave it on, I won't go sideways at all, and this video will be quite dull. But turn it off, and it allows you just enough, just enough movement to have fun, to make you feel like you're Colin McRae or Stig Blomquist, and 
definitely puts a smile on your face. Your first instinct is frozen lake, no traction, we're all gonna die. But uh, the more you do it, the more fun it is. The more you realize how much play you've got, how much you can send the car sideways and just grab it back in again. Also the clever thing, and this is very Swedish, is that uh, the traction control off isn't actually off. So I just made a bit of a muck up of that corner, no problem. The traction control will get me, let me get to a certain point and then will catch me. What makes it so clever is that it's using a particularly brilliant form of torque vectoring. Now the standard torque vectoring uses the brake, tucks the brake on the inside wheel when you're losing traction and pulls you back in. This system can do that, but it's also got a dual clutch system that gives you more power up to 100% torque to the wheel that needs it. So I'm going left here, it will put more torque on the outside wheel to allow me to tuck into the corner better. And that really, really works. One of the bonuses of uh, EV design, of course, is being able to put all the weight under the floor. That's where the batteries live. And impressively in this car, they've managed to get the center of gravity to the same level as a Polestar 1, which was a car, not an SUV. It also means that they've managed to get a perfect 50-50 weight balance front to rear, which when you're doing this kind of thing, is very handy because it means the pivot point of the car is at the very center and that makes it feel more balanced and easier to drive. 50-50 weight balance is much easier to do when you don't have a big lump of metal over the nose. So again, electric cars have certain advantages. The steering is excellent. The car feels perfectly balanced. You can really feel that 50-50 weight balance and it just pivots so perfectly like a mid-engine car. I did think that the torque delivery would be a problem in an EV because on slippery roads you're going to put so much power down so quickly you think you're just going to spin and stay where you are. Again, the cleverness of the torque vectoring is that it puts the power where it's needed, it can go from rear to front, and if you're just cruising along a highway, it completely disconnects the rear axle and you become a front-wheel drive car and save on power and increase your range. Now, this car is designed to compete with the likes of the Porsche's KN, BMW's very futuristic looking iX. This thing doesn't look as disturbing. The Polestar 3 looks sleek and looks smaller than those cars, but it is spacious inside. It's very pleasant. It's got that kind of Scandinavian minimalism. Best interior is very nice. All, uh, all kinds of recycled materials as usual, but plenty of room for a family of five, all of whom would be vomiting all over the place by now if I brought them. The theory at Polestar is that if you can get a car to work here in these extreme conditions, and they are extreme, then it will work anywhere. And for batteries, really cold weather is the hardest work they can do. The other handy thing about testing cars up here apparently, in terms of chassis control and, and that kind of balance thing and working out how the systems will react, is that they call it kind of development in slow motion because everything happens so slowly. Once a car gets into a slide, it's very quick on a road or a patch of ice, but on here, it's very gradual, so that allows them to tune the systems at a lower speed, so they'll work at any speed. But on this circuit, you can really feel that this thing's got some serious punch. The performance version is going to be very, very quick indeed on the road. So I'd have to say, driving on a frozen lake, I probably predicted that it would be about a 11 out of 10 terrifying experience, but it's actually about 15 out of 10 fun. But a large part of that is the ingenious nature of the Polestar 3. In a different car, without the kind of systems to save me, I would be parked somewhere in those trees over there, upside down, on fire, and probably crying. The studded tires probably help quite a bit too. Pretty good for grip. The Polestar 3's advanced safety features include a driver maintenance system with driver alert control, lane keeping aid, adaptive cruise control and pilot assist as well as a blind spot information system and a 360 degree camera and a rear view camera as well. The Polestar 3's road mitigation feature can help steer the car back into the middle of the lane if the vehicle strays off the road. A driver monitoring camera system uses eye tracking to trigger warnings if it detects a distracted or drowsy driver. 
It also uses four internal radar sensors to detect if a child or pet has accidentally been left in the car, and if they have, it will activate the climate control and keep the temperature at a safe level. How clever is that? As far as ownership goes with the Polestar 3, the good news is you only need to service it every two years, or 30,000 kilometers, which is pretty hassle-free. Buyers also receive a five-year unlimited kilometer warranty, five years of roadside assistance, and a five-year or 100,000 kilometer complimentary service plan. Well, that was more fun than a snowball fight, particularly here where the snow's so cold that it doesn't form snowballs. I think I've discovered a new favorite winter sport. It's almost better than skiing, drifting on a frozen lake. We should bring it to Australia somehow. The Polestar 3 is a huge step up in class, driver involvement, design and performance for this proudly Swedish born and bred brand, even if it is Chinese owned. Speaking to the people behind this vehicle, it's clear that this SUV was made to be enjoyed rather than just used, and it really shined in the environment which it was designed to deliver. Whether customers will be on board with paying well north of $100,000 for a Polestar remains to be seen, but it feels like an offering worthy of that price tag, at least at first impression. For more gory details, make sure to read my review on carsguide.com.au, and don't forget to like this video and tell us what you think in the comments below. Thank you.